day everyone. Today we are going to talk about the Republic Act 11479 or also known as the Anti-Terrorism Act of 2020. So let's get started. So according to CNN, Philippines ranked as the 12th country that is most affected by terrorism. Also, there are different groups terrorist groups found in the country and it's very alarming up until nowadays and also during the year 2017 there was a Marawi siege or war in Marawi because of terrorism so basically the structures the buildings are this were destroyed in Marawi city so before Republic Act 11479 was signed into law. There was an existing law combating terrorism, also known as the Republic Act Number no. 9372, or known as Human Security Act of 2007. It states that it is an act to secure the state and protect people from terrorism. It is a declared policy of the state to protect life, liberty, and property from acts of terrorism, to condemn terrorism as inimical dangers to the national security of the country, the welfare of the people, to make terrorism a crime against the Filipino people, against humanity, and against the law of the nations. So that's according to Republic Act 9372. And according to legislators, it is weaker in combating the terrorism in the Philippines before. So that is why there is a proposed law and actually eventually it was signed by Rodrigo Duterte. So the Anti-Terrorism Act of 2020 was sponsored by Senator Pantelo Lacson. It provides a strong legal backbone to the Philippines' response to terrorism. It provides law enforcers, the public, the much-needed tools to protect the public from terrorist threats, and also it safeguards the rights of those accused of the crime. So basically, it effectively replaced the Human Security Act of 2007 in combating the terrorism in our country. So who can be tagged as terrorist according to the proposed to the law, Republic Act 11479? So accordingly, anyone who engages in acts intended to cause death or serious physical injury to another person. You can be tagged as terrorist also if you are engaged in acts intended to cause extensive damage to a government or public facility, public place, or private property. Anyone also engages in acts intended to damage critical infrastructure, telecommunications in our country, as well as televisions and radio. Anyone also develops, possesses, acquires, transports, or uses deadly explosive weapons, and who releases dangerous substances in the country. Those found guilty will suffer the penalty of lifetime imprisonment without benefit of a parole. So, in this new law, RA 11479, if there is a violation, they will be spending 12 years in jail to, with life, it, in, to life imprisonment. You can be jailed for 24 days without a case if you're accused of being a terrorist. And no one is exempted from state surveillance. So, you're, basically, your text, your calls will be survey will be tracked by the government next facts about anti-terrorism law so of course it is a imprisonment of 12 years is the penalty if you are caught threatening or planning to commit terrorism proposal to commit terrorism inciting to commit terrorism voluntarily and knowingly join in any terrorist groups and being an accessory to the commission of terrorism so that is basically about terrorism and we have advantages and disadvantages pros and cons of this republic act so basically it's it will strengthen the maintenance of peace in order in the philippines so with this law it could prevent eliminate or even combat terrorism in the philippines it could also fight violence and punishes terrorism. Cons to disadvantages, the, it will create an anti-terrorism council that could retain a terrorist for up to 24 days, 14 days with a 10-day extension. Also, they could arrest without warrant, 
those terrorists, especially if they are caught, are planning to commit a terrorist tourism. And they could have surveil they could have a surveillance for the terrorist with a maximum of 90 days, 60 days with a possible extension of 30 days. So basically it is a law in the Philippines to prevent, prohibit and penalize terrorism in the Philippines. The law was signed by President Nico or President Duterte in July 3, 2020 and effectively replaced the Human Security Act of 2007. So it is a declared policy of the state to protect life, liberty, and property from terrorism, to condemn terrorism as chemical and dangerous to the national security of the country and to the welfare of the people. So, why is the government pushing it? According to, accordingly, Bokers say the legislation seeks to end terrorism in the country, which is still battling decades long communist insurgency. So, way back in history, there were lots, there were a number of terrorist groups in our country. Mauti Group, Abu Sayyaf. So, basically, with this law, it will effectively end terrorism, lessen terrorist activities in our country. So for instance, in 2017, aligned militants laid siege to the southern city of Marawi. The southern region was rocked by suicide bombing. So if this law were imp was implemented before, so they could prevent um, lots of damages in the Marawi city. Is the signing of the law reasonable and constitutional? Why? In my own perspective, Yes, it basically it will counter terrorism. It gives measures to combat, eliminate, or even prevent more terrorist activities in the nation. According to presidential spokesperson Harry Roque, Harry Roque terrorism strikes anytime and anywhere. It is a crime against the people and humanity. So basically, despite the pandemic crisis happening nowadays, we will not know if terrorism strikes anytime. Maybe now, in other parts of the world, in other parts of our country. So, this law will make it defend more our land against terrorism. Why is it being opposed? According to the Philippine Commission on Human Rights, the broad definition of terrorism paves the road for possible abuse. According also to the Commission of Human Rights, it could be used to limit substantial freedoms, including freedom of expression of the same, while with a vague and overly broad definition, authorities could want to attack the exercise of rights as terrorist expressions. And according to the human rights lawyer Jose Manuel Diokno, it's not about going after terrorists, but critics of the Duterte's administration. So basically, um, one of there are many criticisms, and one notorious criticism is the vague and broad definition of terrorism. What do businesses have to say about the law? So according to Venson in Nikkei Asian Review Portal, at least 16 Philippine business groups have jointly voiced strong opposition with regards to this law. According to them, it is according to him, Venson, it is highly divisive because it poses clear and danger to human rights enshrined in a constitution at a time of pandemic when our nation needs to come together as one. But of course, um, according to Harry Roque, of course, terrorism is strikes anywhere in any time. So basically, we need this law. And what does the international community say about the law? According to the UN Commission of Human Rights, the law dilutes human rights safeguards, broadens the definition of terrorism, expands to greater protection without a warrant from 3 days to 14 days. And the 14 days could be would have a possible extension of 10 days with a total of 24 days. The vague definitions in the Anti-Terrorism Act may violate the principle of legality. So are you in favor of the anti-terrorism law? In my own perspective, yes, definitely. Once again, according to Harry Roque, I do believe also terrorism strikes anytime and anywhere. So because of this anti-terrorism law, it could gives enough sufficient and stronger measures combating terrorism and eliminate eradicate terrorism activities terrorist activities in our country 
and it aims to protect life, liberty, and property from terrorism deemed as inimical and dangerous to the national security of the country and to the welfare of the people. Here is a video about the terrorism activities, distractions, and impacts of terrorism in the Philippines. Death. Destruction. Lima na sir, lima. Tirahin nyo na sir, 6 to 1. Despair. We're in a Muslim cemetery in Marawi City. The remains of 27 bodies recovered from the battle zone are buried here. Local terror groups attempt to take over the Islamic city of Marawi in southern Philippines during the holy month of Ramadan. What do they want? Establish a caliphate where ISIS or Daesh will rule. It's war. Filipinos against Filipinos. Soldiers, terrorists, battle over territory and flag. Republic Act 11479, or known as the anti terrorism law in the Philippines, is basically one of the precautionary measures in combating terrorism in the country. So with this law, it could stop, prevent other terrorist activities in the country. So basically, it will eliminate terrorism in the country. So according to Secretary Martin M. and the North, so of course, it's a collective effort coming from all the people concerned citizens of the Philippines. We need to collaborate. If there are signs of terrorism, so of course, report immediately to the police enforcers, to the, the local government, eventually to the national government. So according to Duterte, a leader must be a terror to the few who are evil in order to protect the lives and well-being of the many who are good. So basically, um, the statement of Duterte is upward from the theory of utilitarianism by Jeremy Bicham, meaning to say he visions and visions for the greater benefit of the majority of the people compared to the evil ones. Eradicate or protect, eradicate those evil ones in order to protect the majority for the general welfare and national security of the country. These are the references. Thank you so much. I hope you learned something.